Welcome to another episode of Australian Caravan and Camping Adventures. In this episode, we will not be caravanning or camping. Instead, we'll be heading to Singapore. Singapore, known as the Lion City, is also an island and country. Having lived here for a total of 10 years, I have a general idea of the culture, cuisine and my way around, so this is where I'll be taking Matt this holiday. We'll be staying here for a total of 7 days and we'll be catching up with an old childhood friend. Prior to entering the country, Matt and I purchased $15 SIM cards which will give us 100 gigabytes of local data to access services such as Grab, Singapore's Uber and a phone number to contact one another. First stop, our Airbnb, located on River Valley Road, a very central location. This place cost us approximately $850 for six nights. On top of our studio apartment, facilities include a washing machine and dryer, as well as the cleaner cleaning our room twice a week. We started our first full day in Singapore exploring the zoo. Having been a member of the zoo as a child, coming here brought back glimpses of nostalgic memories as the entire place looked dramatically different. What was once a couple of ticket booths next to an open parrot exhibit had now tripled in size and included a large food court. Entry to the zoo is $39 for adults and $26 for children aged 3 and above. Famous for its open concept layout, the 26 hectares of zoo house over 300 species of wildlife. You guys are very lucky you came at the exact right timing when he's down. So he only comes down. Oh, yeah. He only comes down once a day, and it's usually within this particular hour. Other than that, he's usually high up in the trees hiding. So you can you can't see him. Check out this lady's selfie stick. Keen to make the most of every meal experience, we left the zoo to have lunch in a very local part of town, Angmokyo, where I went to primary school. With no tourists in sight, I was able to give Matt a true Singaporean experience. Surrounded by HDBs, subsidised public housing for Singaporeans, we saw plenty of clothes hanging on bamboo poles and explored the shops and hawker centres underneath the buildings.
Mmm, roti prata, handmade dumplings, and good old char siu rice. It's day three and we're ready for breakfast at Maxwell Food Center. This is where we'll get to try the best chicken rice in Singapore from Tian Tian Hainanese Chicken Rice. This dish is full of flavor and the chicken literally melts in your mouth. We take a quick five minute stroll to Chinatown where I'll finally get to do some shopping. It didn't take me long before I remembered how good these people are at ripping you off and how bad I was at bargaining. I guess I lost that part of the Singaporean in me. Heading over to the famous Marina Bay Sands area, we'll be having lunch at the 24-7 Hawker Centre Satay by the Bay. Along with some quality satay, the Indian food tastes excellent here too. About a 10 minute stroll from the food court is Gardens by the Bay, where the famous greenhouses known as the Flower Dome and Cloud Forest can be found. What makes these greenhouses extraordinary is the sheer amount and size of foliage in here and the fact that they're all air conditioned. To access the two conservatories will cost you $20 per adult and $12 per child aged three and above. Here in the Flower Dome, 3,332 glass panels are needed to cover the 1.2 hectares of greenery. The coolest part about the cloud forest is that it houses the tallest indoor waterfall measuring 35 meters high. I would recommend visiting this conservatory after the Flower Dome because this one is so much more exciting. About a 15 minute walk from Gardens by the Bay is Marina Bay Sands, a large hotel and shopping mall with a giant boat-like structure sitting atop it. Whilst the infinity pool is only accessible to hotel guests, we'll be making our way up to the Sands Sky Park, where we'll get to stand on the edge of the boat to take in the stunning scenery of Singapore. Day four had us moving at a much slower pace and we enjoyed a good coffee and fancy breakfast at PS Cafe.
We also enjoyed the lengths that some Grab drivers went to to ensure a unique and quality service. Here I am in the lift. I've got my dirty clothes and my washing powder that I bought for $1.90 and I'm heading down to the washing machine and the dryer. Today's shopping experience is at Boogus Junction, where we'll encounter a variety of computer and knick-knack stores. Matt will also have his fair share of sugary treats and experience just how good a $7 Godiva Belgian ice cream is. Once Matt is safely dropped off at the Airbnb in his sugar-induced coma, I'm free to spend a couple more hours shopping at Vivo City. What can I say? I've got a two-year-old that requires lots of presents from this trip. It's Mummy here. I want to show you some more presents that I bought for you. Have a look. Got you some bags, some hair clips, See them? and another Elsa outfit with a bag as well. I hope you're being a good girl. Love you, Ella. Bye. A quick freshen up at the B&B and we're back out for drinks and dinner at Clark Key. Matt even tried a local ice cream sandwich. It's a shame the bread tasted a bit stale, but it's all about the experience, right? Now we couldn't come all the way to Singapore and not have their famous chilli crab. This stuff is to die for. And what better way to have it than with family friends. How about, oh this is a nice big one. Oh beautiful, thank you. Chilli crab, woohoo! After dinner we took a stroll down memory lane to Dave's old favourite beer place. <laughs> what is this? Chindle? Are you doing a boomerang? Oh, Chindle. place my dad used to take us for chicken wings. And for some fun at the Turkish ice cream stand. Day five saw us heading to the island of Sentosa via cable car. Here we are on our way to Sentosa in the cable car. 
What was once a boring old island with a couple of average museums and beaches is now packed with its own resorts, adventure courses and Singapore's very own Universal Studios. We also got to experience a whole lot of crazy halfway through our cable car ride when we picked up a family who literally spent the entire trip scrambling to various windows and yelling at one another to take photos. Once we reached the island, we sculled a terrible Starbucks coffee before strapping up for our mega zipline experience. Whilst this was meant to be an extreme activity, the golf buggy drive up to the top of the hill seemed more extreme than the zipline itself. We took a quick pit stop at 7-Eleven to stock up on some interesting drinks and then made our way back to the centre of Sentosa to go for a ride on the luge. We decided on three luge and sky rides which cost us $27 per person. Oh my god, people got off the track, what are they doing taking photos? They are, oh my god! Ready for lunch, we make our way back to the island of Singapore. One of the best parts about our food experience in Singapore was that we didn't always have to go out to eat good food. Grab delivery was our best friend. Tonight we will be catching up with our friends for some fish head curry, but for now we've got time for shopping in Little India. Matt found the electronics stores to be particularly interesting and even paid $8 to have a glass protectant applied to his mobile phone. Tonight, we'll be eating our Singaporean delicacy at the Banana Leaf Apollo. Eating the eye of the fish is considered a real treat, so it's only customary that Matt and I have a taste. Okay, eat it up, Matt. Here's the other one. Here's the other one. I will. You can have a burrito. <laughs> Day six has us lining up for a late breakfast or early lunch at Five Guys. Singapore is known for its amazing local food, but the American meals here are just as awesome. You pretty much can't go wrong with anything food related here.
After brunch, it's time for a stroll down Orchard Road, the city centre known for its designer label clothing shops, underground passes that make it easy to walk from building to building, and the famous Four Floors of Whores. That's right, the brothel building. Oh, and there's always time for a good coffee and a trip to the nail salon. We happen to stumble across the Spectra Light Show when we arrive at Fullerton Road and wander the restaurants along the waterfront. Getting up close to Singapore's Merlion with a view of Marina Bay Sands in the background is simply sensational at night time. We chose to dine at Little Sheep to enjoy a hot pot meal along the riverfront. Matt needed a sugar hit. This one was a little unusual. It's our last morning in Singapore, and so our final breakfast is at the nearby Tato Ray time, where we'll enjoy some coin prata and a coffee C, aka coffee with condensed milk. With an early check-in at 11am and our flight at 8pm, Matt convinced me to spend the entire day at Changi Airport. I was a little sceptical of this decision, but it turned out to be the perfect end to our trip. A big attraction here at the airport is the Jewel, a shopping center that surrounds a large indoor garden with its very own waterfall. Ella, can you see who's behind us? Access to the cafes on the top level is free, however, entry to the canopy park that covers the top deck will cost you $5 per person. This is a great place for kids as there are discovery slides, foggy bowls, beautiful gardens and bouncing nets to climb on. Another main attraction at the airport is Shake Shack, an American burger and shake restaurant. Once again, we're standing in line. After lunch, we make our way through customs to the airport swimming pool. As I strolled through the airport cactus garden, I reflected on our wonderful experience and catch-ups with old childhood friends. Singapore was my home for so many years, and I was glad to have finally been able to share these new experiences in my hometown with Matt. So, before I end our trip here, I'm going to leave you with a random video of a Singaporean toilet. So clean la!